Next into the den is Ben Pearson, an entrepreneur who spotted a big gap in the market before turning life's challenges into the driving force behind his business. I'm really proud to be here today. Having autism, it takes a lot of guts to be here, but I'd like to inspire others and show them where there is a will, there is a way, and we should not be held back for having these slightly different ways of thinking. When it comes to a choice of business partner, Ben has a particular investor in mind. Looking at the history and expertise of the Dragons, I think Tuca would be the one, but I'm not ruling anything out. Hello, Dragons. My name is Ben Pearson. I'm the owner and founder of Big Clothing For You. From a young age, I was diagnosed with autism and several other disabilities, I've spent the majority of my life in social care, young offenders institutes, and homeless. I became nearly 30 stone from having mental health issues, but I took a lot of counselling and overcame these barriers. But there was one thing I couldn't do, and I couldn't find clothing on the high street. There wasn't a thing that fitted me. So, in 2015, I started Big Clothing For You from my bedroom, sewing on eBay and Amazon. In 2021, we turned over 2.9 million. In 2022, we we're on track to turn over 3.5 million. I'm here today to pitch for 150,000 for 10% stake in big clothing for you. But why? I might look like I've done it, but I haven't. I'm stuck and I can't expand. I can't get into the international markets and that's what I'm looking for. So please do have a look at our range and a couple of samples in your boxes. Thank you. Can I have a look? Of course, please do, Tuka. A plus-sized clothing company with plus-sized international ambition is the proposition from entrepreneur Ben Pearson. Hope you like what you see. He's seeking £150,000 in return for a 10% share of his business. Good. Fashion tycoon Tuka Suleiman has already got hands-on with Ben's products, but now he wants to get a feel for his business. Ben, Tuka. Hi, Tuka. Well done. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm very impressed. You know, the funny thing is, is that this is a market that has been ignored. Mm. So your size starts from where? So we start at 2XL and we go right up to 8XL. 8XL? Yeah. So that shirt that Deborah's got mm. probably takes about two and a half metres. Yep. And how much does it cost you? Uh, that was £6.80. Great. And we sell and what do you sell it for? £29.99. Wow. And oh. it's nicely. Have you looked at them? They're really no, no, no. Nice. So that's great value. No wonder you're cleaning up over here <laughs> on the turnover. Yeah. So you don't do formal wear, do you? Yes, we do. We do have a collection shirts? that covers it. Yep, formal shirts, suits. And how much are we selling the suits for? Around £150. Wow, you're cheaper than my brand. <laughs> <laughs> Look, to me, there's a, there's a big opening here. How have you funded the business so far? So when I was one years old, my grandfather left me a big trust fund. And when I was late teens, uh, the trustees uh, decided that that could be released to me. Wow. And when you say a large amount, was that? Substantial in the hundreds. Hundreds of thousands of pounds? Sure. So just take me through last year. You said you turned over 2.9 million. Yeah. What was your profit on that? The gross profit was 69% and the net was 200,000. And the next year? We we're looking about 5 million. And how are you going to start selling overseas? Do you have an international website capability? Good point. No, we don't. So this is one of the reasons why we need the investment. We actually need a dedicated resource to display correctly in these countries. And this could be quite interesting because I happen to own one of the world's leading e-commerce software companies that sure. takes brands to global markets. Could be interesting. Peter Jones hints at a potentially lucrative tie-in that could see Ben's garments go global. Now, Stephen Bartlett is keen to find out more about the man behind the menswear. I have to say, I'm, I'm really really inspired by your journey, specifically because you mentioned that you were in a Young Offenders Institute at some Correct. point. Yeah. But I wanted to get some more detail as to 
how your life has, has shifted in such an inspiring way. Sure. So I found there was a gap in the care system and it rendered me homeless. So I hit rock bottom and I thought, I've got nothing, but I've got nothing to lose. So while I sat on the streets, food banks, I thought, yeah, I can pick myself up. And I just started ploughing forward. OK, and is that Harvey Price? It is indeed. How did you get to, to meet them? Um, he was struggling to find clothing and 18 months of persistency, knocking on Kate's best friend's door, I got to meet him with Kate and uh, we never looked back. And so is, is he a brand ambassador? He is. OK, yeah. What would you say that you're not good at? Very good question. I often ask people in interviews this. <laughs> so there's many things I'm not good at. I guess controlling my anxiety because I've got autism. Yeah. So um, coming here today, I'm not very good at interacting with people. I don't think I am in my mind. It takes a lot of courage for me to yeah. do it. Well, you've just demonstrated how good you are at controlling your mind for, for the benefit of yourself which is absolutely exceptional. You're one of the best pitches I've ever I've seen since I've been in the den. Oh, thank you very much. Ben's temperament and tenacity are winning him plenty of admirers in the den. Will his business's numbers make a similarly positive impression? When you started in 2015, how much capital did you put in to start the business? 680,000. So is the director's loan account still sitting at 680? Uh, no, the director's loan account is about 1.3, I think. So you've got personal cash invested in this business of 1.3 million? Correct. When do you plan to take that out? I don't. Rather than drawing a salary, I've been taking some out of the director's loan account as and when I need it. OK. So what is your stock on hand? What's your balance sheet looking like at the moment, basically? Uh, balance sheet, I think, stock's about 2.3 million. You've got stock of 2.3 million. Given that a high proportion of your business is trend, you're sitting on a lot more stock than I was expecting. I don't know in a fashion business, too, but what's a normal...? Well, normally, your stock cover should be about six, seven hundred grand. So you've got too much stock. Two million pounds worth of stock offsets a large director's loan. Money Ben could withdraw from the business at any time. His books appear balanced, but for one of the dragons, things simply aren't adding up. Ben, just take me through. So where you are today, what's, what's your sort of retained earnings? In other words, the, the profits that you've ploughed back into the business and you've retained in the company, where would, where would they sit at today? Yeah, I think they're... Uh... Just short of 800,000. And how much cash in the bank have you got? 143,000. And creditors? I think it's about 250,000. And debtors? Under 5,000. OK. And your total stock is 2.3. Is that 2.3 cost? Or is that retail price? Uh, that's at the retail valuation by Deloitte's. Yeah. Retail, not cost? Yes, that's the retail. That explains so what's the, the what's the cost? Yeah. The cost of that stock. About six hundred. When you first come in and say you've got two point three million in stock, you're going, wow, you've got some serious cash behind this this business. But when you deduct the reality of life, you've put such a large amount of capital in, and you're not taking any salary at all, and any money you do take out, you're taking and reducing your director's loan. Is that a perfect summary of the business? It's a, a good way of looking at it, certainly. Yep. I'm good with numbers. You certainly are. You say you like honesty, so I'm going to be really honest. I was going to make you an offer. Yep. But I'm sadly going to say I'm not going to invest because of that only reason is that the balance sheet just demonstrates that the business isn't quite there. So I can't, I've got to say that I'm out. A Peter Jones probing reveals that Ben's balance sheet is nowhere near as healthy as it first appeared, and he's lost his first dragon. Will Sarah Davies see sufficient promise in the business to make its CEO an offer? I love you. You are the most straight-talking person I've ever met in business. And it is so refreshing 
But on the flip side, that 1.3 million still owed out to you on a business that's been highly profitable for so many years, that is just ringing really big alarm bells for me. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Ben, you are brilliant. It's a real pleasure to talk to somebody who you ask a question, they answer it, mm. and you believe it. You know, I can work with that any day of the week. But I've been sitting here battling with the balance sheet. I'm afraid that side of me is one. So I won't be investing. I'm out. Ben, I've wrote a lot of things down here. And there's a couple of words that I wrote over and over again, seemingly, and that is describing you, smart, inspiring, relentless, dogged, and trustworthy. And then I wrote, I want to love and be inspired by this industry and business as much as I am by the entrepreneur. I'm not incredibly passionate about this industry. Both aspects are incredibly important for me to want to make an investment, because I'm really, really compelled by one of those aspects, but not by the other. That is the reason I'm going to say that I'm out. Four dragons down and the clothing entrepreneur's prospects of a deal now hang by the slimmest of threads. Only Tuka Suleiman, who was originally Ben's most wanted, is yet to declare his position. You know, I am sitting on that fence because when you came out with your balance sheet, I just thought, oh, it was deflated. It's not in the same healthy state as you, you pretend it to be, unfortunately. Okay. You know? Mm. Silence and den. If you don't make an offer for this one, Sucre, I don't know what you're going to make an offer for. Mm. It's got your name written all over it. Yeah. Look. I'm going to make you an offer. Sure. All the money, 150,000, but I want 35%. I'd love to accept your offer. Great. Absolutely brilliant. Well done, Fantastic. Ben. So pleased. Ah, cheers. Brilliant, Thank you. Brilliant. It's a perfect fit as Ben sews up £150,000 worth of investment and the backing of a dragon whose skill set is ideally tailored to his company's needs. I've never been so pleased somebody else won an investment. Congratulations, Tuka. Thank you. Tuka. Thank you. Tuka, well done. Thank you. Having Tuka on board is going to be a fantastic addition to our business, just what we need. If anybody else out there has autism, what I would say, especially if they're young, never give up. Don't let anybody stand in your way.